In this video, we're going to take a look at customizing the Photoshop CS5 workspace. Now, the interface for Photoshop is extremely flexible, and you can really make it look like just about anything you might need, particularly with the arrangement and organization of the panels over on the right-hand side. Now, as you saw in the previous At a Glance video, if you watched that, you can choose between a variety of workspace presets, such as Essentials, which is what we're looking at now, Design, painting, and if you come over here to the drop down, you can choose photography, 3D, and so on and so forth. You, there's even one for what's new in Photoshop CS5, which just shows you some of the cooler new features, and really that's about it. Now, what if you want to create something that works specifically for you? What if you don't see anything in here that really speaks to you or has you know, what you want to see or what you want to work with? Well, fortunately, the flexibility of the interface allows you to really make some radical changes to how Photoshop's interface is laid out. For instance, we have the options bar across the top, which as I mentioned earlier, is a context sensitive area where as I select different tools, you'll see that it updates. Well, this bar can actually be ripped off and placed anywhere you want. Uh, we can place it at the bottom. We could move it onto another monitor if we so desired. I have a, another monitor over to the left that you guys can't see, but I could put it over there if I really wanted to. Or when we're done, we can drag it back up here to the top, and you'll see this little tiny blue stripe appear along the top, and that tells you that you're redocking that options bar right back where it belongs. Now, as for the panels area, we can reconfigure these however we like, but generally speaking, I don't like to change around these default workspaces. To you, it, may, uh, it might make no difference whatsoever, but in my case, because I still have to teach videos over Photoshop, I try not to mess with any of the default settings. So what I'm going to do is show you how to create your very own workspace. So let's click on the little double arrow here and open up the menu. We'll come down to New Workspace, and we'll give this a name. Let's call this My Awesome workspace. Actually, let's just call it awesome workspace. We'll say that the my part is implied. Now, you can also choose to capture any keyboard shortcuts that you adjust, as well as any changes to the menus uh, that you might make, so that when you switch over to this workspace, all of that updates as well. These two options are a little bit outside the scope of what we're discussing, but it is cool for you to know that if you make changes to the shortcuts, uh, you can keep those from one, sp uh, one workspace to the next, which is very nice. So go ahead and click Save, and you'll see we now have awesome workspace up here at the top. Now, if I make any adjustments to this, so <laughs> such as grabbing the Adjustments panel, and I can drag that to the middle of the screen. If I switch back to Essentials, it's over here. If I go back to my awesome workspace, it's over here. Now, you can lay these out in any form or fashion that you like. You also have access to several different panels which are not available by default, at least in the Essentials workspace. For example, one of the more popular ones that I find myself using a lot is the Navigator, which helps you navigate around your document. So if we open that up, you'll see that it comes in. Incidentally, it comes in with some other things as well. We get the histogram and we get the info window. They just kind of piggyback along with the Navigator, and you see they're kind of tabbed into the exact same panel. Now I can take the Navigator, and you see its little icon here. It looks like a ship wheel. I can just pull that off and I can float that out in space. I can take the adjustments. You might remember that was actually docked over here on the masks panel. Well, currently the panel where only masks is sitting. I can drag adjustments right back over here and you'll notice that there is some blue highlighting that takes place here. And this is just telling you where this panel is going to end up being docked. So if we get a blue line dragged around this panel where it originated, that means we're going to be docking back inside that panel. If I instead get a nice blue line here along the entire side of the panel area, you'll see that I'm actually making kind of a new column, like so. If I don't want to do that, we can tear him back off. And I'll go ahead and drag these back over to the corner where they belong. You'll see everything kind of bumped out just a little bit. And I can grab this little bar at the top, and I can slide that right back over to the right-hand side. Uh, we can take the navigator, and we can redock it right back where it was. And again, you, you kind of have to look really closely at what's being highlighted. Here, we get the entire uh, box for this lower portion of our, our panel bar here. And you'll see it just gets added right to the top. Let's go ahead and break it back off. 
I can also get a blue line right in between the histogram and the info window. That means it'll pop up right in between the two. I'll go ahead and break it back off. I can dock it to the bottom. Now notice a couple of things there. If I drag it just inside at the bottom, you see I get a blue line that's heavier down toward the bottom of the box. So the whole box is highlighted, but there's a heavier blue line down there at the bottom. And that just means I'm docking it to this part of the panel, so this section, but it's at the very bottom of the list. The reason that's important is that when you have icons grouped within a singular panel, they're going to be tabbed if you expand any one of them. So here we get uh, history, we get info, and we get the navigator. Now we can reorganize these tabs as well. So I can take the navigator and I can drag it up first and notice what happened over here. The icon for the navigator jumped up to the top of the list. And as I reorganize those, you'll see that icon sliding around. Now, if you don't like that uh, tabbed style, if that gets distracting, or for any reason you don't like that, you don't have to deal with it. You can, of course, just break these off and you can redock them each one as their own individual panel. And now you just get a singular window. It's a little more, it's a little heavier on your real estate, but only by a little bit. And now you don't have to worry about tabs. The great thing about doing this is you can start reorganizing each one of these things in a way that makes the most sense for you. Now, in this case, I have two different panel columns here. I've got the one starting with mini bridge at the top, and then I have the much bigger one with the color swatches and the styles here. What I want to do is show you that these are really essentially the exact same thing. There just happens to be two of them. You don't, you're not limited to having one big one and one small one if you don't want to. Uh, for example, if I come over here to the right hand side, we have this little double arrow that says collapse to icons. And if I click on this, you'll notice that my right hand column of panels crushes down to some icons, but you know, they look different than the, co than the icons on the left hand column. Over here on the left, we just have icons only. And on the right, we have icons with names. There's no difference. It's just that this column on the right hand side is a little wider. Watch this. If I move my mouse over here so that I get the double arrows right along the edge of this column, I can drag this over and it'll snap back in and all we have now are a bunch of singular icons. Now using some of those docking features that we talked about earlier, I could dock mini bridge right here in the middle. I could take my history and dock that directly underneath mini bridge. We could recombine our navigator and our info window as well as the histogram, which I'll put right in between the two. We can take all of this and dock it, say, right in between mini bridge and the rest of my uh, my buttons here. And so now we end up with all the panels that we had before in a single column that takes up very little screen space. Now, if you're totally new to Photoshop, this can be a little bit confusing because now all you get is icons and you might not yet be at one with what each icon means. Please note that by default, you can hover your mouse over any icon in Photoshop for just a couple of seconds and a tooltip will pop up reminding you what that thing is. Or just as before, we can now grab the left hand side of this panel and and we can slide it out and now we'll get labels next to each one. So whichever way you prefer to work. And then if you like, you can just expand and collapse. It's just right now, there are so many buttons attached to this or so many panels attached to this that it really does kind of disappear off into infinity. So I wouldn't necessarily work this way, but you can if you want to. If you leave them all collapsed, either down to single icons or to labeled icons like so, then you can click on each one and as you select one, the others in the list will collapse down. So you can just use mini bridge, and of course when you switch over to history, only that appears and so on. It's a very nice way to utilize the interface. Once you get the hang of what each one of these icons means, you may want to just go ahead and collapse that down, and now you can just work with the icons alone, and it's a very nice, clean way to have a minimalistic workspace that doesn't really intrude on what you're working on. Now, all of these changes, all of this dragging and docking and redocking that I've been playing with, that's all taken place underneath my awesome workspace. So if I click back over to Essentials, you'll notice we're right where we left off. If I switch back over to Awesome Workspace, everything jumps back like so. So this is a quick look at how you can update the workspace to a way that is comfortable with you. If you have just started using Photoshop, do not be too surprised if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't yet know how I want to, uh, to customize the user interface. That's fine. As you start to work more and more with Photoshop's tools, playing with each one of these panels, you'll become accustomed to which panels you utilize the most. And then those will receive priority. And then at some point down the road, I'm sure, uh, you'll see the benefit of taking some time, moving some of these panels around, and finding that workspace that is just 
perfect for the way you like to work inside of Photoshop. This is especially true if you happen to have multiple monitors, because if you have this kind of floating document, I'm sorry, it's floating uh, series of panels here, if you like, you can take this entire area and drag it off onto a whole different monitor so that you have all of your tools, various settings and whatnot on one screen, and then you have just your workspace, I'm sorry, just your document, just the image that you're actually working on, on the other. So I just wanted to make sure that you've seen how to go about adjusting your workspace into something that works best for you. The last thing I will show is that you do have the ability to delete workspaces that you create. So if you've been playing around with one and you realize that that was uh, you know, kind of a just a test interface and you'll, you'll probably never want to go back to actually using that workspace ever again, you can delete them. You just have to be off of that particular workspace that you want to delete. So as, a, as an example, if I'm using the awesome workspace and I come over to delete workspace, we get a window which pops up with all of the workspaces that could be deleted. But notice, awesome workspace is currently grayed out because that is the active workspace. So if I cancel this, I can switch over to essentials, jump back down to delete workspace, and then we can click delete because awesome workspace is eligible for deletion. Do you really want to get rid of it? Yes, I will miss it. I'll cry a little. But now it's gone, and we're right back to our default of Essentials Design and Painting. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.